good evening ladies and gentlemen and a very very warm welcome to all of you who are present here this evening today for those of you who have been with us before already know us and for the ones who are here for the first time i would love uh, to welcome all of you on the word learning in higher ladies and gentlemen is a teacher professional development and evaluation company and we work with educators and experts from across the globe with only one thing in mind that we want quality teaching to be reaching all the classrooms across the country and across the globe we have received such amazing response so much of love from you for our past uh, webinar series which was the summer of learning and uh, we have today brought to you another series of webinars and this will be happening every wednesday at 5 o'clock and we would love to have all of you on board with us every wednesday evening well uh, at higher we are making an earnest attempt to help teachers and educators across the globe to upskill themselves to be able to embrace the pedagogical changes that have been happening in the past few months and that might happen in the near future so that once we are over this period we all should be ready with our bag of tricks with our instructional strategies and with a lot of uphold skills in our hands to be able to approach the future of the classroom so without much of ado i would love to set the ball rolling for today and uh share my screen so that i'll uh, take you through some housekeeping rules so just give me a minute for that so just a gentle reminder that during this webinar the panelists cannot see you we also do not use the raise hand feature in this session uh for all your question and answers and your queries towards the panelists we'd love if you could put it across in the q and a section that helps us find the questions faster we always uh, encourage a lot of debate a lot of discussion so we'd love if you put across your comments your expertise your tips towards others in the chat section and keep it going while we encourage a lot of debate we would also request all of you to be kind and extend all the courtesies that are actually essential uh, on all such platforms and the world actually needs a lot of kindness let's begin uh, from this platform itself for those of you who are interested in the webinar recordings and the ppts uh, i'd like to remind that the entire set of uh, the ppts today from all the panelists along with the recordings of today's session will be shared will be sent across to all the registered members and uh, last but not the least a quick reminder that we do not offer certificates for all our webinars webinars uh, that higher organizes are open learning and sharing platforms we'd love people to come across share their expertise and experience and learn from each other but we do not offer uh, any certificates for attendance well uh, i'd also like to talk to you today about the higher's big four of learning and essentially everything that we do at higher uh, the dna of that is in these four big fours of quality teaching uh, everything all our events all our webinars all that we do are based on these four pillars because we feel that these are the four pillars the four essential components that all teachers should be honed in to bring about quality teaching in their classroom the four pillars are first planning for classroom delivery second designing instruction third managing student progress fourth practicing professionalism and every week whenever we organize a webinar or an event or a workshop we focus on one of these domains to bring about the expertise to all of you and today's focus is essentially on designing instruction and more uh, focusedly on designing instruction using art as a medium of learning when we talk about art if we look around everything around us has art in it somewhere or the other art is something that is available to us in so many forms we can't even name it you talk about painting drawing dancing music so much to do all under this one big umbrella of art and how can we use 
art as a medium to be talking in the classroom? How can we use it effectively to be able to uh, follow and give our instructions, to be able to deliver the knowledge of different subjects in our classroom is what we are going to discuss today. So without taking much of your time, I'll quickly move on and introduce to you our lovely panelists for today. We have with us today, Dr. Pavan Sudhir, who is the professor and head of Department of Education in Aesthetics uh, and Arts, DEAA, NCERT. Uh, Dr. Pavan has been doing so much in the field of art. I think anyone related to art integrated learning cannot miss Dr. Sudhir's name. And ma'am, we are so happy to have you amidst us today uh, so that you could share your expertise with us. Next, we have uh, Samina Mishra. Samina is an avid documentary filmmaker. She's a writer and a teacher from New Delhi, India. Samina has also been doing some wonderful work in the field of art and will be sharing with us her expertise this evening. Next, we have with us Mandakini Mathur. She's the founder of Devrai Art Village. She's an avid writer, a filmmaker, a poet, and comes from the beautiful town of Panchgani. Uh, and she's been doing some wonderful work uh, with the people, with the tribal people in that area uh, for including the stone and brass together and making things out of that, which she's going to talk about to us in today's session. Last but not the least, we have Siddhi Gupta. Siddhi is a visual communication designer, Kalakaram Curriculum, DIY Art School, New Delhi, India. And Siddhi also has been doing some wonderful work in the field of art, integrated learning, and she'll be sharing how can art be effectively used in our classrooms as a medium of blended learning and teaching students the various concepts. So uh, on that note, I would not take much of your time and without uh, actually spending a lot of time on any other thing, I would love to call upon our first panelist for today, which is uh, Dr. Pavan Sudhi. Uh, Pavan ma'am, uh, before you begin, I'd love that this session that we are beginning today, are we starting today, begins with a set of questions. The questions that actually every teacher has in mind when she talks about, when she thinks about art integrated learning. I think many a times art is mistaken with activity based learning. A teacher feels that if she's had a child draw something in the class, if the child has painted something in the class, it is essentially art integrated learning. And this is, I think, the biggest, uh, you know, misconception that is there with teachers that hampers the real uh, integration of art in the classroom. So I'd love if you could throw some light on how effectively a teacher can integrate art and what are some of the challenges that teachers face while uh, actually implementing art integrated learning in our classrooms. Over to you, uh, Dr. Sudhir. Thank you, Divya. First of all, uh, uh, let me uh, greet everyone uh, who has joined today because it's a huge number. I saw that we have reached almost 500 participants. So it's a great participation and I must congratulate uh, higher for this that uh, so many teachers, teacher educators and some administrators are also part of this program. Uh, I would love to start uh, saying what I want to say with my congratulations to all the uh, panelists, higher team, and to the uh, teachers and teacher educators on the release of new education policy, which is NEP 2020. We all know that it's first time that uh, a policy has given so much space to arts. Because we here in NCRT, uh, we did the uh, comparative also, and we saw that uh, none of the policies, though we have wonderful policies and commissions and uh, reports, uh, so much we have done so far, but we were waiting for this kind of document. And we are, we especially, the people uh, who are uh, having more faith in art integrated learning are more than happier that we have reached that stage where now is our part to do it. But document has everything in it. Uh, Divya, you asked about a particular question. I think 
before i go uh, to uh, answer this question i would just uh, take you around with the background of art integrated learning how it uh, came to existence and when why did we start this so art integrated learning is a uh, is a uh, model for teaching and learning and it was launched in 2010 11 academic year so it's is 10 year old the concept is 10 year old but its basis is in the uh, ncef 2005 the wonderful national curriculum uh, framework for school education that uh, uh, ncert uh, developed even today is so valid that we see that whatever is there in nep 2020 uh much of it was already part of ncf 2020 only thing is that now it is in the policy and it is uh, very well clarified and elaborated so people will follow it but sometimes when policy doesn't have it then even if we put it in ncf some boards and some governments do not follow it so it was uh, it the basis was there in ncf 2005 where it was written in just half a page of uh, our uh, focus group paper uh, 1.7 that art as subject is this 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 and art across the school curriculum is this so that half page was more than enough for me to elaborate it to uh, art integrated learning and the name uh, came in existence in 2010 this is how it started so we did a survey of uh, all our government and some of uh, uh, self financing but good schools where few things were happening like mirambika basant valley and certain schools where we saw and it was convenient to go because we knew certain people there so we did the uh, surveys to study and have the success stories because it was not uh, the rule to go for art integrated learning it was by choice and if they get uh, influenced and they get uh, convinced that yes this works they will follow otherwise they will not follow whether ncert says it or somebody else says it so we did that uh, study and we found that wherever people were doing it uh, sincerely and with that understanding it was wor working like anything it was working in tribal area it was working in very posh kind of schools it was working in two teacher schools so i had lots of stuff uh, to start my work with and we had frequently asked questions from all over the country wherever i had focus group discussion they said hum to kaise kar sakte hain how do we do it uh, art needs so much of time and we are teacher of this particular subject if we start this then we will be losing on time how do we complete our curriculum especially the government schools you know because there they they have so many other things to do and we in ncert are more connected with the government government schools so we had lots of uh, such questions and based on that we developed uh, a short set of uh, guidelines and also a training package uh, where we had seven modules uh, sequentially uh, placed to take our teacher um, uh, into 10 days of capacity building program and we started it and uh, in we did it in 16 states and after that research studies uh, getting their feedback and after 3 years from delhi from bihar and from maharashtra we we got information and they presented it as innovative uh, pedagogy they said that uh, especially the delhi schools and uh, bihar school they said that uh, our um, scholarships at primary level have increased to double and i am talking of our municipal corporation school mcd here and same with the bihar so people started noticing when i was saying 
many of my own colleagues in NCRT and uh, some in ministry were not that convinced. But when states started presenting uh, AIL, uh, popularly known, uh, is a name for the heart integrated learning, they said that nothing worked there because we don't have resources, we don't have many teachers, we are two uh, teacher school, three teacher school. So this is something which is working. This is how in 14, 15, we were noticed. And then in 16, 17, it was made part of the uh, main mega training program of NCRT. Now you know that Nishtha, where we are training 42 lakhs of teachers and um, HOS of our um, all government schools of the country. This is a main module and it is taken as a pedagogy. They, they write art integrated learning pedagogy of experiential and joyful learning. So this is a great achievement for all of us that in government sector, because it's not easy, in government sector where you have millions and millions of uh, uh, teachers and forget about the number of students we have. And we all know that they don't have resources. They don't even have enough of infrastructure. So when it, it, it got that kind of records, then this was uh, uh, taken very seriously. Now ministry is promoting it. And uh, this is NCRT's main module of pedagogy of experiential learning. And uh, the, the new things which you are seeing in uh, national policy, uh, you'll find that uh, learning outcome, competency-based learning, all this is the agenda of our government. And uh, we found that art integrated learning is uh, is such a uh, teaching learning model where without much of resources, why I'm saying much of resources, like our schools do not have to spend anything. They are going to, like Ma'am Mandakini would agree with uh, us, that where in tribal areas or remote villages, there is only one teacher available. Another is going around to the city for some written work, uh, talking to uh, people for uh, midday meal and all he's or she is busy with that one teacher handling five classes and they are doing excellent with leaves with seeds uh, with the throwaway materials with woods i don't know flowers every day our uh, inbox is uh, full of such uh, um, pictures and with a small captions, um, my three uh, third standard student did, did this, my six year old did this. So, so much is going on and without spending any money. And you know that government needs that because we do not have that, that many resources. And even if we have, even when we start, it will take us at least three, four years to reach those corners. The, the reality is not hidden from all of you. But in private sector, things are uh, much more uh, uh, like, uh, I won't say easier, but I would say convenient because easier it becomes when they understand it. Like uh, our great panelists, my co-panelists are there and I have seen the uh, uh, PPTs and I'm waiting for that because they are doing wonderful uh, work um, through art integrated learning. So this is how it started. And now um, the, the level where it is also I have shared with you. And now coming to answer the question, the valid question that you asked, and that is where the teachers, especially the subject teachers of higher classes are making mistakes. They think that any diagram or any teaching aid, you know, done colorfully, or, uh, or uh, maybe materials bought from here and there and uh, shared um, with the students is art integrated learning. Or any artwork done uh, by, uh, one second, somebody is creating noise. One second, please. <laughs> Well, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Actually, they did not realize and they started testing the uh, uh, bell. And I'm listening to the music. Maybe you are not. So I was getting disturbed. Sorry. 
so uh, uh, what is the difference between activity based education and art integrated learning is very clear art integrated learning is uh, uh, learner centric where learner is given art as a medium and the child is the learner is going through the uh, his her own experience expression with any kind of art form whether it's role play it's drama it's a group group uh, activity of dance composing music singing or uh, printing uh, drawing and painting or even playing no hard and fast rules they are they are not being judged they are not uh, uh, being corrected they are just given an opportunity to explore that particular medium and be happy but teacher at the background is the uh, puppet here who knows who has planned everything and has given uh, uh, open space to children to have the experience so that they learn not only the art they explore not only the art but the topic or the concept which teacher has planned to link with that uh, uh, art experience so after doing that half an hour or one hour or sometime even 10 minutes activity we also call it activity because when i write art experience which you will see throughout this document uh, uh, which is uh, um, there uh, on art integrated learning there we are mentioning it art experience but if we uh, openly say art experience sometimes they don't understand they again talk art activity so here art activity means the art experience that we want uh, teachers to conduct so in activity based learning which is a model you all know that started from tamil nadu uh, there is a set of activities which is planned for all classrooms teacher doesn't have much of flexibility and teacher has to follow what is written in those uh, handbooks uh, concept wise and even the uh, uh, sometimes i have seen because i have been to all those schools and i have seen that they are teachers are fed up doing those uh, activity based learning because every now and then they are repeating the same activity so in that activity based learning there is less of freedom and there are more of rules which are being followed so children are already fed up or are scared of or afraid of rules of textbooks syllabi and the classroom so if we go for activity based learning the activity based learning i won't say that activity based learning as as a, a, a whole is uh, uh, less but the way it has been planned is it doesn't have any match to uh, art integrated learning because here if you have 40 students 40 students can think 40 different things and can express in 40 different ways and teachers are uh, oriented to respect expression of each and every child which was missing in uh, activity based learning but i'm sure that if activities are planned the way we have all uh, planned our art experiences even activity based learning can be like uh, art integrated uh, learning so i hope divya i am able to clarify the uh, difference and also what is lacking in activity based education thank you over to you thank you so much uh, uh, dr sudhir and I love the term art experience. And I think that's a wonderful term because when we talk about activities, like you said, it is more constrained, it is more confined to a set of instructions that is laid to conduct that particular activity. But the whole term of art experience in general and how this art experience can be used very flexibly, offering a lot of experimentation, how it can be used amongst different subjects 
is something that uh, all of us are loving to explore and we are here and we'll find out listening to all the other panelists about how they're doing it in the different fields. So ma'am, we have a, a lot of questions coming across and I'd love to throw it open uh, to all the panelists, but the first one essentially to you ma'am. Uh, and uh, one of our um, uh, uh, teachers today, uh, Anshu, she has asked us that, what if I'm not a good artist? And still I want to be artistic and want my students to use art integrated learning in my classroom. So uh, how can I do it effectively? I think it's a wonderful uh, question that you have asked, uh, sir. And uh, in our government schools, my uh, 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 training module, the first module says that wherever we had art teachers, we had more of resistance going for art integrated learning. And our teachers who did not know art, who said that they, they do not know this medium and they are not good artists, uh, they were the one who excelled and they are doing the best for the simple reason. It, I, I'm sure that my colleagues here, especially from the field of art education, will not take it otherwise because I am a qualified artist, art educator and researcher. So uh, should not be misunderstood that uh, I'm in any way putting them down. Uh, but when you study art as discipline, somehow you get conditioned to check. Like we check in mathematics, two plus two is four. So our art education people who are trained in arts, when they look at children work knowingly or more time, many a time unknowingly, they start checking and giving their observation, correcting children. That is what we do not want in art integrated learning. For art education, we have all those set of checking and assessing and evaluating. Here we are taking it as a, joyful and experiential uh, learning model. So if we want our children to explore, if we want our children to, uh, to really experience different art form. For example, I'll just give one example. Uh, in Kerala, because they have lots of uh, these uh, uh, leaves, no? coconut leaves and all. So one uh, the, the, there was uh, uh, lessons happening on mathematics, uh, primary uh, level mathematics. So uh, there was one concept of centimeter and work centimeter. Okay, so uh, this teacher said it is very difficult to explain these two things at primary level. Uh, only one or two children in our class uh, understand this, but we don't know what to do. And then what we did, they uh, we said let's do for uh, go for the mat weaving. So what they did, they took leaves and they started weaving it. So they created a mat. It was an excellent example for us to explain to our teachers now how to move further. So first they did with the leaves. Then I said, let's take uh, old newspaper. We'll make strip of one centimeter each and 10 centimeter long. So we created 10 such strip of one centimeter width and 10 centimeter length. And then they did weaving with that. So it became 10, 10, 10. So every, every one centimeter became work centimeter. So uh, I'm just trying to put it because you are a person of mathematics. So I, I'm uh, I hope that you are able to understand it and uh, you'll be able to clarify it for the, um, in a better um, method. But if it was, our art education person, an artist or a craft person who is very, very good with the art and is trained to check art and assess arts. He or she will have many ifs and buts and tell children this is not good. We saw that there were some children who were not able to make this one centimeter uh, uh, parallel, uh, the, the, uh, that kind of uh, strip that it is one centimeter at every corner. They were those kind of things also. But the, the teachers of mathematics and other subject, they liked it. And they said, we never knew that we can do this kind of things also. To put it uh, in simple words, that is better that you don't know arts because you will have fun. 
you learn with your children and let me tell you very frankly your children will do better than you and they'll gain more confidence uh, when you know less and they know more in arts because arts is something where you should you should really give them a free hand the moment you become bargad ka ped like you are a banyan tree then there is nothing uh, 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 under the um, uh, banyan tree so in art integrated learning since we are uh, believing in free expression and experiential learning so we are throwing it to our teachers and telling them don't hesitate if you know less is better for the children thank you thank you thank you so much dr sudhir and uh, it was such wonderful to hear from you and uh, uh, learn so much from you and uh, although there is a bundle of questions that we have received but uh, uh, i think it's time to move on to our next panelist for this evening so i'd love to welcome on board now uh, samina uh, samina over to you hello everyone thank you thank you very much hayo um for organizing this and for sort of putting the spotlight on um on the arts in education um i'm uh, very glad to hear uh, dr sudhir lay so much emphasis on uh, subjectivity because that's one of the things that, uh, that the arts um throw light on and i think uh, i'm really glad because what the pandemic um, and the lockdown have thrown up for us is the need for greater decentralization rather than having something controlled from afar we know that we really need to work at building networks on the ground and have people uh, close to children everywhere who are in a position to be able to guide them and facilitate them even when schools are functioning remotely and uh, we know that we are far from uh, an ideal stage in in that regard and even as we wait to see how the new education policy unfolds and how it plays itself out it's good to know that people uh, in uh, positions of power are laying emphasis on subjectivity because a lot of what i'm going to talk about is about that so i'm a, um i'm going to just share my screen and then take you on from there um i'm trained as a as a filmmaker uh, and i i also write um and i run uh, because i'm interested in um i'm sorry um because i'm interested in uh working with the arts and the children i do um uh, sort of workshops in uh, different non formal spaces and i also teach art um i teach film uh, at in a formal way um and i run a kind of virtual resource center called the magic key center for the arts and childhood my work uh, focuses a lot on working collaboratively with children and um finding ways of being able to give them room for self expression and to be able to engage with the world why do i think that the arts um, are are important especially in education i think um first of all the arts as we all know is a sort of mirror holds a mirror to society but i think for children children learn as we grow uh, by responding to the world around them and the arts become a way for them to understand both the world that they live in the world they inhabit as well the world as worlds that other people inhabit other kinds of children inhabit and so their place in the world and the place of others in the world i think uh, because the arts as dr sudhir pointed out the place of uh, subjectivity because of that i think the arts help to build critical thinking and uh, sometimes this may mean that actually by encouraging that self expression and subjectivity we may actually be uh, the ones who then get questioned you know the teacher to begin with and perhaps later uh, policy makers and the state itself can become uh, 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 sort of question questioned because children have developed those critical thinking skills the arts also i think enable uh collaborative skills because you learn to work with others you when you work on projects together you know that you have to create something you have to listen to another person you working against a deadline you or you you know at at younger ages perhaps you are trying to complete it in a certain lesson time you know that you're working together to 
finish something and it develops those collaborative skills. And in the process, it teaches you to be a listener and therefore builds empathy. And I think uh, by opening up again, to come back to subjectivity, by opening up different experiences of uh, experiences of other uh, kinds of uh, children and other uh, from other parts of the world, other spaces, it helps to build intercultural understanding. These are all buzzwords that we hear a lot in uh, progressive curriculum. And I think that uh, there is a real way of actually making meaning out of these if we have more place for the arts in education. I don't think that the role of the arts in education is to turn every child into an artist. Um, just as Dr. Sudhir was saying that every teacher doesn't actually have to be an artist um, uh, to, to, to bring the arts into the classroom. Every child does not have to become an artist uh, when you engage with the arts. But the child can become, uh, can, can have the eyes of an artist when the child is looking at the world and making sense of the world. And what is, the, what is the eye of the artist? The eye of the artist is actually all of those things, to be able to question, to be able to uh, build bridges with people different from yourselves, to be able to look at the world in a way that it hasn't been looked at before, perhaps. And if we can build uh, a community of children who are able to do that, then perhaps many of the inequalities and the difficulties of the world, uh, this would be the first step towards trying to make sense of that. So uh, for children, I feel, um, apart from, of course, in the ways that Dr. Sudhir talked about, you know, the very practical ways in which the arts can be used, in a larger philosophical sense, I think that the, um, uh, by bringing the arts into the classroom, what we do is we give children both uh, a window and mirror. This is a phrase that's been used by, you know, educationist Emily Style. And I, it's one of my favorite phrases when I think about uh, classroom practice. Sorry to disturb you in the middle, Samina. Uh, if you could just press on the present button, it'll go oh, so wider sorry. and uh, easily. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Press it sure. Thank you. Yeah. So um, when Emily, Emily Style uses the phrase window and mirror uh, in the context of curriculum, but for me, I feel this is something uh, that is valid in so many ways in, uh, uh, in education. Um, art allows children the window of looking at new ways of being, uh, of, of other ways of being. What is it like? What is the world like for different, for people who are different from yourself? That is the window that it opens out. So it opens you out to new experiences. It opens you out to finding ways of, you know, talking to people other than yourself. And then art is also a mirror. It allows children uh, the, the, the space to be able to express and find resonance. So uh, by being able to find yourself in something, you are then able to see that, am I similar to somebody else? Or, or is, has someone else experienced something similar to mine? Um, maybe there is a difference. To some extent, we are similar and then we are not. Uh, we respond to this together, but we respond to this differently. And yet, what does that mean for us? Can we work together despite that difference? So it allows for that very healthy way of being able to uh, engage with both difference and also develop a sense of yourself. The two things can happen, I feel, um, in a very uh, organic way if we give more room um, to the arts. So then, what does it mean for the teacher if we want to do all of those things? Um, I feel that you know, it, uh, it is wonderful for us and on, for policy to recognize the place of the arts, but if we don't you know, talk about how the teacher who is on the ground is going to actually you know, understand this and make sense of it, then this uh, thing that I started with, the, the, decentral, the need for decentralization, then we don't really actually end up going there because it is really about that teacher uh, having a certain perspective because that perspective is what is going to enable the place of the arts in, act in real learning. So I don't think, I agree when uh, Dr. Sudhir says that every uh, teacher does not have to be an artist. I totally agree with that. I don't think it is about skill uh, or craft and it is certainly not about creating you know, an activity. I think it is about perspective and approach. So I feel um, the teacher needs to be somebody who appreciates art. 
a teacher should be somebody who is open to being enriched by the arts. What uh, the term that we uh, have in Hindi is rasik, that you are someone who is allowing yourself to be enriched by the arts, which is that you are allowing yourself to be exposed to that and to learn, to just respond as somebody who listens to music, who watches a film, who uh, watches theater, who tries a, the hand at craft and is able to say, okay, I can't do this well, but I can see how the other person does it well. So to be a rasik. Then I think a teacher needs to be a curator. The classroom is a shared space in which the teacher I think the best learning happens when we are sharing, and whether we do this as a parent or we do this as a teacher, I think the best learning happens when we are really excited about something, we are really passionate about something because then we are able to share that pleasure with the child that we are with. And the sharing, the, uh, you know, the experience of shared pleasure is the space in which actually we learn and where the child then gets um, uh, uh, the desire to perhaps explore more and experiment on her own. So I feel that the teacher needs to be a curator who uh, finds the right resources to bring into the classroom. And you can only do that if you have been a Rasik and you have opened yourself up to different art experiences. And finally, I think the teacher should be an explorer. This is true for not just the teacher, but for all of us, I think. Uh, the, the wonderful thing about children and childhood is that there is a wonder about the world. And I think that that is something that we all need to hold on to. And so we should be, we should be curious and we should be constantly exploring um, because that is really what, like it, it, it would be wonderful for a teacher and uh, the children in the classroom to explore something together and to discover a new kind of art form together and what that maybe means for a concept that they're doing in maths, for example, that they are discovering it together in a shared way. Um, so this, just very quickly to, uh, because I would like to actually share some of my project with you, but this is just to say, but I think some of this other people will have a better handle on, and Dr. Sudhir has already talked about this, but uh, it is about being able to think, what is it that I'm teaching, and what are the resources in terms of artistic expression that help me uh, to talk about this concept, you know? So there is work that has been done by uh, artists, uh, because artists engage with concepts, and so they've engaged with all kinds, myriads of concepts. So even for math and science, which seem to be subjects that may not lend themselves that easily to art, actually they probably are. So, you know, I'm just uh, uh, pointing out the art of say MC Escher and what that can do for a maths class. Or even in science, there is this wonderful project called the Universe in Verse, which celebrates um, the natural world through poetry. And there are, uh, you know, the, the poets uh, like Walt Whitman, or there's a physicist called Jana Levin who does storytelling. So these are ways in which we can actually open up concepts because these are people who have philosophically thought about concepts which uh, come from a certain discipline but they've engaged with it in an artistic way. And that is what the arts do, that allow, they allow us to look at the world with new eyes. In, it's the same world, but if we are able to look at it in a new way, perhaps we find a new way of creating a better world. So my work, uh, which is what I'd like to share a little bit with you about today, is um, about <clears throat> basically working with children, uh, to give them room for self-expression. So it's about children's voices and about resonance and dialogue. For them to be able to find uh, ways that they can see that there are differences and yet there are similarities and we can talk about them. Um, I, a lot of my work focuses on the everyday to be able to do this because I feel that uh, it is in the everyday that we can see. We actually, that this, this sense of uh, uh, window and mirror actually uh, translates into the everyday if we only just focus on that. So instead of only talking about, you know, things like unity and diversity in conceptual ways, I think that if we focus on the everyday and really see what does that mean, you know, how is it similar for us and how is it different for someone else, that every day allows us to be able to talk about that and create engagement. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of my projects. This is a book um, that I did called uh, My Sweet Home. 
Um, let me just stop the share. I'm just going to show you the book uh, for a minute. Uh, I have it right here. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. So this is a book that came out of actually um, a workshop that I did with 20 children uh, in uh, two schools of the Jamia Millia Islamia. And it's a book about their everyday in this neighborhood. And they did writing and they did art. Uh, this is some of their art. And they wrote about everyday things, which uh, included, you know, the desire to wear a pair of jeans, um, which included going to the mosque for prayers, which included uh, wanting to go to the bakery to buy cake, and also included um, an incident that took place there, which was um, uh, uh, perhaps traumatic for many of them, which was the Butler House encounter. And so many of them talked about how the, you know, there was violence over there. And although we focused on the everyday, this experience of the violence uh, came up in their art, though we did not ask them these questions at all. So I'm just going to go back to uh, show you the blog. Um, <clears throat> what I've done after this, so uh, the book kind of um, talks about everyday life in, in, in different ways, um, if you, with, with different kinds of art practice. So they used um, crayon, watercolor, um, uh, you know, wax, different things in the image making. And in terms of the writing, we started by sort of, um, you know, uh, single line exercises that talked about, you know, ideas like freedom, uh, which included things like children saying, I want freedom from uh, history class um, and uh, freedom from green vegetables. So simple things like that, which are playful. We moved from that to um, writing uh, more paragraphs around certain ideas. So, you know, about your name, about uh, what is different about your house, what is your neighborhood like, what you think your neighborhood is famous for. And in the course of writing about what the neighborhood is famous for, some children wrote about, you know, particular cuisines or a certain um, uh, weekly bazaar that would be held. And some children wrote about the encounter that took place. For example, on this um, slide, you can see where this girl Kushbu wrote about how her neighborhood is famous because an encounter took place there, a fake encounter. The boys who were killed were students. They were not terrorists. The police framed them, etc., etc. So this allowed the child room for some kind of self-expression. Um, what I've done after is that I have gone, uh, once the book came out, we've done workshops. And by, uh, we've worked with both children um, we've worked with teachers, we've worked with teacher educators to be able to uh, talk about like how can we use maybe some of the same exercises in the classroom space, how can we use the book perhaps as a resource to talk about questions that come up, concepts that come up in social studies, so for example about the world around you. And then many people, for example, um, in a school in Panchkula, they, did, they used it in their own uh, way, this resource. There's a library project in Goa that has used it in its own way. So we've done workshops in different sorts of way. And I thought I'll just share with you something which I did with um, NDMC school children in Delhi. Uh, we Am I running out of time? Out of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is the last thing that I'll do. Um, so uh, the, one of the stories in the book is about uh, you know, uh, a, a little uh, a bird who, who, is, who, who gets killed while playing uh, through a game of cricket. And that, uh, when, when that story is shared, very often children uh, respond to that because everybody plays cricket and very often there are these uh, incidents where, you know, the ball hits somebody or something happens and there's a little incident. So what we did was we asked these children uh, after we shared the book and, the, you know, different stories, different children's voices, we asked them to write letters to any character from the book. And many of them wrote these postcards, which you can see, and uh, they, which talk about uh, this uh, particular uh, incident. So, for example, this one says, Tabish, hello, I read your story. It's very good. I like, I also like to play cricket. But I play cricket at the ground, not at the bank of the river. Um, I like your story. Your sister is crying when she sees that the bird was dead. I go to play cricket with my friends. 
one day my uh, uh, mother told me that I should also play with my cousins. So this is, there, there is a feeling of how um, something that has happened to, some, to a child in a story is resonant with something that I have also experienced. So since I've run out of time, I'm going to stop there to say that I think what is most important is to be able to think about the approach that we bring to the classroom and not so much skill. Thank you so much, Samina. And there were so many inputs. I think it was overwhelming to hear you. And uh, my takeaway is essentially that how an educator needs to be a curator, an appreciator, as well as an explorer to help effectively use art integrated as a medium in the classroom. One quick question, Samina, before we uh, move on to um, the next panelist. And um, here we have a question saying, uh, essentially in India, where the class size is very large at times and the space available is very limited for a lot of uh, schools and a lot of classes. How can art be effectively integrated across different subjects and uh, different uh, classes? So of course, class size is an issue. And uh, you know, that's something that I really, I don't have an answer for you for that. Uh, to, be, to work with uh, uh, bigger classroom sizes, uh, you know, using resources uh, in a certain way, of course, is the thing to explore. So when I, for example, uh, when I do workshops, I, don't, I cannot work with 40 students at a time if I want them to create something, if I want them to be able to write something and actually for us to have time to be able to share that, right? But it is possible for me to do with a classroom of 40 to show them a film and do a discussion around that which enables the um, you know, conversation about certain ideas. So of course the ideal is that we, don't, we have fewer children. You know, we work with 20, 25 at a time, but we know that's not the reality. So we have to be sort of, we have to have diverse approaches and uh, try different things in different ways. Right, thank you. Thank you so much there for your inputs. And quickly moving on now to our next panelist for this evening. Uh, Ms. Mandakini. So Mandakini, can we have you? Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Haya, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, everyone, to, for being here. So uh, I, I won't be, I'll be sharing 20 years of uh, experience in uh, art-based learning. Uh, but I won't be giving specific uh, strategies, maybe a little uh, food for thought, some raw material where each one of you could use it according to your needs. So uh, yeah, let me start with my uh, thing. Um, so the first slide. So this is what we do at Devray Art Village. So we create metal, craft using the lost wax technique. And uh, this is a human heart. And this was actually made by a 10th standard student from an IB school from Mumbai who had come uh, some years ago. And just last week, I found that she had shared it on her uh, Instagram page. And I noticed, and that is when I was preparing for this. And I noticed what all uh, hashtags she's given, physiology of heart, uh, uh, you know, uh, human hand and uh, spiritual journey and all that. So when this group had come to us for a workshop, the art teacher was with them and he had told to express their learnings, the 10 years of schooling through art. And, uh, uh, and each one came up with such uh, unique ideas like the first one I showed you about the heart. Now this, this is, uh, I, I think probably she was talking, this is the earth with the wave. The first, uh, the first uh, picture shows you how it was made. So we make it first in wax and then it is cast in metal. So when you are making in wax and this is a stone, which is our unique contribution to this uh, uh, ancient art of Dhokra, which the Adivasis here do, uh, but you know, it gives you the freedom. It's like Play-Doh. So she came up with this idea. And I was, I, you know, art plays a crucial role. Can, it has the potential 
when a child can express in his own way. So it's in the expression that creativity comes into play. Otherwise, in a normal school or any evaluation system, you have the standard yes and right and wrong answers. But here is a rich uh, an expression of deep thoughts, which, uh, which can be interpreted in different ways. So it creates a dialogue between the teacher and the student, between different students, and that's where the potential of art is. So uh, I was myself, I mean, I like uh, Samina said, I am a learner with them. And it, actually when a teacher is learning, that's when the joy in uh, teaching and learning both happens. Because you're not giving information, you're learning with the students and they are creating it, they are seekers, they are active participants rather being just uh, absorbers of information stuffed into them. So. Uh, next, uh, this thing. Now here we, we hold workshops where school children come and even interns from design schools and art and individuals, all kinds. And uh, you can see in the first um, picture, even in the second, our own Adivasi uh, crafts men and women interacting with these mainstream students. Now, this I would like to, you know, for with, uh, I was flipping through the national education policy. All uh, we have such a diversity. India exists in so many time zones. And if you have to think of uniform education, it's not possible. You cannot have a simple policy uh, for all. So for these tribals, why don't we integrate them into our mainstream education as teachers? And indigenous knowledge systems, which are so much neglected in our mainstream thing, it can be incorporated. And both the mainstream students will learn as well as those. They will get livelihood options. And this side of the world will get to know about the unknown India, which is the real world. We are so disconnected. So this is what uh, I uh, understood from my experience. Another thing about the potential of art as learning medium is that you can create fantastic resource materials. Now here I uh, created, uh, I mean, we created, in Devrai we work with metal and stones and pottery and all, but never with fabric. But here I created an interactive board game based on the story of the hare and the tortoise. But uh, in this game, uh, the tortoise, can lose and the hare can win. So it questions the set patterns of thinking because after that there were interesting conversations that the slow and steady need not necessarily win the race. And you know, like uh, I'll uh, show you, we had made these uh, little uh, uh, pieces with um, a dokra and, uh, and it was fun and there was, so there were two boards, one was a maze, and if the hare, have, each player had a hare and a tortoise. And if the tortoise fell into the dream maze, he had to go onto this, the, uh, the uh, blue maze. And so, you know, it's just about uh, uh, questioning standard stories, morals, and making it more, making the child an active seeker and coming up with new ideas. The second uh, thing which we did with fabric was this calendar. So here there are these magnets which are colored with the faces of the moon, which can be moved around uh, on the iron pieces. So every month the child has to recreate the calendar for the month. And there's a pouch at the bottom where we can talk about his, uh, I mean, it could be used to keep their poems, their writings on different celebrations, the change of seasons or whatever. And at the end of every month, the, uh, it uh, enables the, the teacher to sensitize the child to different festivals and moon phases. And then you can make your connections. It's, it, it is on the teacher to create these uh, different, plug into different things, what she wants to teach. And you can, I mean, uh, the teacher, the idea is to, uh, it, uh, you know, the teacher, uh, like uh, Samina said, the teacher is a rasik is a curator. So she, once she actually, it comes, it has its own momentum 
And then you come up with ideas and both teaching and learning becomes such a joyous experience. So um, now this, uh, as you can see, this is a pot and we have done dhokra on pottery. And this is the famous parable of the thirsty crow. But this was made by a tribal apprentice who was learning. So we train even tribals uh, in uh, all these crafts and arts. So when we were, ca after casting, when we broke the mold, the pot broke. And this girl was so disappointed that, oh my God, now this is a waste of a piece. But then I suddenly realized that, wow, this is such a brilliant metaphor to talk about how we have ravaged Mother Earth, that you may put as many pebbles, the crow may use his brains and technology and put as many pebbles, but the water won't come up. So talking in metaphors, talk, interpreting life, because the child has to learn from life and life it's not compartmentalized into subjects. So how do you plug into different subjects, whether that girl talked about physiology of heart and here it's about the, what is happening around the world. So again, art shows mirror to the real world, but it also helps to go within and without, explore human relationships. And so, uh, next. Another thing with art I found was it's a perfect medium to connect with nature. Now the uh, real flowers you're seeing are on the table land in Panchgani. I took this picture last week only, and this is the season where the wild flowers come. And we are making them uh, at Devrai. This is the wax stage. This is, it'll be soon cast in brass. But what I'm trying to say is children have to be taken out into the real world. And Panchgani is a school town. There are so many schools here, but rarely are the children taken into the forest. They are taught environmental issues through class books. I mean, what a pity. You have to ex make them experience uh, the children. We know too much. We feel too little. And this is where art comes into play. So we made a film. We've made a film with children from a school here called A Classroom of Flowers. Um, and uh, we took them to Cars Plateau, which is a world heritage and uh, uh, site for wildflowers. And uh, so it was all about exploring the world of flowers. And they learned so much botany from that. Real, the, uh, for the leaf and everything, everything about botany, about uh, half their science class because the science teacher uh, later on also was uh, and Akhne, yeah we would love to hear more from you but we are really yeah, having sure. positive so I, I think i need to i get so similarly when i say that uh, filmmaking although i'm not a filmmaker and i started making films uh, as a way to uh, you know with children so <laughs> this was uh, our film on ads and food facts how ads uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a change your food habits, children. So they made it and we did experiments. And uh, so next slide, we in fact uh, took a tooth from a boy, we kept it in coke and later the people, dis uh, they discovered that the tooth had dissolved and we went to a pedodontist and so on and so forth. What I want to say is that when you start making films and write up, uh, just not viewing films, but actually actively making, you come to know that filmmaking itself, uh, that there are so many ways to say, and what is, you know, media awareness, which should be an integral part of our education system, because now children are bombarded with uh, media. So they have to be discerning viewers. So that's what they learned that, you know, uh, and that's how filmmaking enabled us to uh, help because this was all about how ads are created. Uh, and then with my experience with uh, Adivasi children uh, who had come uh, in a mainstream school, I was teaching them English, but I realized that uh, uh, we are making them forget their own stories. So then I created these, uh, with my, uh, this thing, telling stories about their own culture. And this girl who you can see, she was my student 10 years ago. And now she's a teacher, Seema. She's a teacher, she's teaching 
English and maths in a local school year. So this is the kind of integration we need to bring about and that art enables us. So I think I will come to the end. I will just end with a little, um, this thing, uh, Plastic A Hind, which we did. So apart from theater, apart from films, then it was theater, songs, everything. So this is a little Kavali, which was performed as a street play, Plastic A Hind. And this one is a plastic monster. So uh, I end with that. <laughs> So uh, I, with that, I, uh, this was uh, amazing. It was uh, such an amazing uh, presentation, Mandakini. And there was so much to take away from it that, I mean, uh, I'll be thinking all day and all night about all the ideas that you put across. And thank you so much for being with us on board today. And yeah, it was such a pleasure. And I don't know, this line of Picasso is coming to my mind. I think it was Picasso who said, all art is a lie, but it's a lie that takes you closer to truth. So that's the potential of art. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So on that note, Mandakini, we'll quickly move on uh, for inviting our last but not the least panelist for today's evening, which is Siddhi. Siddhi, over to you. Uh, thank you so much. I feel everybody has already covered everything. So even if you don't listen to me, you wouldn't have missed out on much. So I don't know what, what new to say, but uh, I'll quickly share my screen and uh, take you through the small presentation. But thank you everyone. I feel uh, I've just been a lucky participant who's been able to see the screen. Siddhi, you can present on done yes. and then present. Okay, done. Uh, I'm going to begin with the easy question, which is why, and it's become even more easier, I think, after listening to everyone about why we need art in education. And I think all of these reasons are coming from what we want education to achieve. I think why we need art and learning is because there's a certain idea of education we have in our mind. So for me, if I had to just quickly say two lines, I would say I think education is a way of making meaning of the world. Mandakini ji, Samina ma'am, Dr. Sudhir have all already said it, that with education we make meanings of the world in which we live and we make our own special meaning. I'm going to align this presentation a little towards visual arts because that's what my background is in. And I think if we mix visual arts within this education, I think we allow for different meanings to exist together. We make space for people to understand that there doesn't have to be just one meaning of the world. Now, to give you a quick example, if I ask you to spell tree, there is only one right way to do it, which is T-R-E-E. -E. But if I ask you to visualize it, all of your answers have the scope to be different. Which is why when we add visual arts to this mix, we allow for, this, for these different meanings of the world to exist. Also, when you make the tree, you will have to answer certain questions. Should the tree be big? Should the tree be small? Should it be fat? Should it be thin? What color should the leaves be? What kind of fruits will this tree bear? So when you visualize it, you have to answer all these questions. Also, when you think of the kind of fruits the tree will bear, it will affect the food you eat and where you live. Or where did you see this tree? And it will come back to your life. So I think uh, T-R-E-E -E is one answer and one solution. But visualizing it allows you to give, you, allows you to give multiple answers. And everybody else, it, it allows you to give those multiple answers and look at the world with different meanings. I'm now going to ask you a question, which is to identify this Indian art form. Zibya, if you could quickly pick up, uh, load the poll and give everybody five seconds to answer what art form, which Indian art form this is. And if I can see the results, even if uh, not, it's okay. It'll, it'll take a little bit of time, uh, Siddhi. Okay, so then we'll move on and come back to the results. Maybe maybe you can just uh, unmute yourself and tell us whenever the results come in, okay? Yeah. 
So, Siddhi, you can go on. Uh, it'll take time for me to launch the poll. And in the meanwhile, you can uh, move ahead with the presentation. I'll come back maybe. Okay, I would have given the answer by then, but it's okay. I think, I think, I, I think considering we're talking about arts and learning, we might as well leave today's session with some art that we've learned. We've already learned a lot with the previous presentations, but this is the Bheel, it's, a, it's the Bheel art form. And here are more examples of the form. And they're all by a particular artist called Bhuri Bai, who belongs to the tribe. And this is where in the world she lives. She lives in India, in Madhya Pradesh, in Bhopal. Why I'm talking about Bheel art, I'm not sure how, how you all fared uh, on the poll, but to just say that even after knowing all the benefits of arts in learning, knowing of knowing all the benefits of engaging with the arts, we've come very far from it. The reality is it's, it's, we have not kept up with it. And if, and if it doesn't happen in the classroom, in the learning environment, it's difficult to make sure it happens afterwards. If it doesn't happen at that early or at that level where we're all forced to go or, or, or at a place where we all go inadvertently, it's very difficult to happen after we have left that space. So to, coming back to Bheel, if I can just talk about Bheel art for 10 seconds more. Bheel is the largest tribe of our country who only use, it, who only use the dot to make their artwork. And there are lots of reasons why they would use the dot, but the reason I like the most is that it says that it's the staple food for the tribe, which is why they use the dot. Talking about connections with the world, this is how they make their connection with the world and this is how we can experience it. Raza is another artist who's worked widely with the dot. And Raza said that the Bindu symbolizes the seed because it is the potential of all life. Raza saw the, saw the potential of all life in the same Bindu in which the Bheel saw something else. And you'd be surprised, but there are many other artists. We have the Ab Aboriginal art in Australia. We have Roy Lichtenstein in the US and we have Yoi Kusama in Japan, who've all made meanings of their very different worlds, but use the same concept of the dot. Now this art already exists. It's not new. It hasn't come into being today or yesterday. But as we were talking about the educator being the curator and being the rustic, how can we take it to the classroom? How can we integrate it and ask then the learner, what about the dots that exist around you in the objects that you see every day? What about the dots on your own body and the sun and the moon and the solar system that we've ex been experiencing so far? Actually, isn't everything a dot? Because the table comes from the tree, which comes from the plant, which comes from the seed, which is a dot. So I, uh, I really congratulate Hire on giving us this little subtitle with arts and learning. But this world already exists. And why can't we make connections with the world through art in this way? Now, I feel this is one story that I have told you. I have curated this story, but taking it to the classroom is a different dialogue. The Arts Integration Report 2019 had a very interesting quote. It said, integration is followed by introduction. And it means lots of things, but for me, and I think some people have been asking about these questions in the chat, but we have to introduce all of this to first the educator so that they can integrate it. When we say this, we also mean that we give the space for the educator to be the learner and then again be the educator to go back to the classroom and integrate it in their classroom. So we did exactly this. We took this dot story and all the worksheets and we gave them to the educator and said, now you come and sit with us for an hour and do these worksheets and do the art and then you tell us how are you going to integrate it in your classroom. So the science educator came back saying, oh, I can teach matter with this dot concept. A literary educator came back to say, oh, I can make a poem out of, I can make a silly alphabet poem by joining these dots in the order I like. Another teacher said, I can teach how a cell, how the, cell, the diagram of a cell and the different components of the cell using the dot diagram. And an accountancy and a business study teacher came up together and they said, why can't we design a bookstore that represents Australian Aboriginal art? There was a question in the chat where a business studies and accountancy teacher was asking. And I think that's what happens when you introduce the concept, when you take these stories to the educator, they plug them in. When the Akri ma'am was talking about livelihoods of indigenous language, we need these young people to engage with this knowledge in new ways and finding new ways of livelihood for our tribal and indigenous art forms. So it was very interesting if you could look at it from the business perspective and see how can we sell it? What happens? What is the currency we're going to exchange? What are the negotiations we're going to have? Now I can't conclude without, I think, mentioning the NEP, but we, I had made this worksheet to start the dialogue about art integration with educators to say, what is art in integration? And I said, this is your artwork and all you have to do is join dots. Now, whether you teach language, whether you teach numbers, this is very easy for you. 
But now when I look back in hindsight, actually we were not just integrating art with these different subjects, but we were also integrating English with Hindi and Hindi with maths and all of these together. And I think uh, art integration is no longer an extra task that we have to do. If we have to achieve the education that the NEP sets out, or the education I think we want the child to have, which is experiential, which is objective, which is beyond the textbook, which is about his or her own environment, which is not watertight, compartmentalized into different subjects, then art integration is an answer. It's a solution to be able to achieve all these things. And I'll just leave you with that thought and the responses that some of the educators had to this worksheet. Thank you. That was so amazing, Siddhi. And uh, well, I'll take away, everything starts from a dot. And that's how we've all begun. So uh, that was such, such an amazing uh, input from your end. And how wonderfully a, a small concept can be taken away in the class and can be integrated in so many different ways across so many different subjects and across so many different grades. So thank you so much. And uh, on that note, uh, we've already uh, crossed our uh, usual time. I would just like to end today's session, uh, you know, uh, taking one final bite from all of you that um, some of our teachers feel that art integrated learning uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, and uh, to actually implement in the classroom, a uh, lot of time and energy goes by. And uh, so how can that be, you know, actually uh, helped out uh, how can we uh, plan and uh, do it effectively so that best results come out and at the same time uh, that paucity of time that we generally have in the Indian classroom uh, is also catered to. So I'd like everyone to take this question one by one. We can begin with you, Siddhi. Uh, I think you say thank you. Uh, thank you for the question and I understand the, I understand the time problem. Uh, but I feel what doesn't have the time problem? You talk to a chef, you talk to a fashion designer, you talk to anybody, they all have a time problem. And I, I think they, I think we, but, but at the same time, with this time problem, we all want capacity building. We all want to do new things. And if you are an educator who wants to do, uh, who wants to achieve learning, I'm not going to say best learning or good learning because we don't know what that is. But if you want to achieve a certain kind of learning in your classroom, you will give it the time and you will, you will make it possible. And if you're a rustic, you'll make it possible very easily with, with no time at all. So I don't think there's any shortcuts to this. Thank you. Thank you, Siddhi. Uh, over to you, Mandakini. You'd like to add on something to that? Uh, yeah, time, uh, it can sometimes quicken the pace as well. Uh, art integrated learning. And actually we need an overall of the whole system, evaluation system. If there are no right and wrong answers expected and no written exams, and if one is assessed with a piece of art which the child, is, uh, the child shows what he has learned, it would, it would change the texture. It would change the texture of our education system. And that's what we should aim at. Because then time is of no, no, uh, relevance because uh, sometimes it can be a eureka moment so where's the thing thank you thank you mandakini uh, over to you samina samina you're mute sorry i'm so sorry yeah i agree with the uh, both uh, siddhi and mandakini in what they have said i think um, uh, in higher classes, of course, you know, this pressure of um, sort of delivering to curriculum because, you know, you, it is related to grades and things becomes that much more critical. But uh, for younger classes, I think maybe the thing is to also look at time in an artistic way, you know, we have to look at that also differently. And as they have both said, that perhaps there is a way in which we aren't expecting it, that we focus more on the process rather than on the product, you know? So uh, we look at the time that we spend together in, and, and focus again for what I talked about is approach and uh, the teacher's perspective. So um, I feel that that, you know, brings some elasticity to time by changing our perspective. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I, I think it is also a very real problem, especially for higher grades. 
right but then like you said focus more on uh, you know the process than the product i think that's a wonderful approach uh, and some final words some closing note from dr sudhir thank you divya i agree with all my co panelists they have put it uh, in a very well manner and a good news that uh, in our national curriculum framework the discussions which are going on and i'll be joining uh, a discussion on action program uh, all these things are going to be there so friends it's time for all of us uh, and really uh, we are going the way we were visualizing and now some of you are putting it in practice but now at national level we are going to do it because we are going for the school based assessment where every teacher will be given freedom it is uh, uh, would be uh, like the whole thing is competency based uh, process will be evaluated more than the product so uh, that is where art integrated learning fits and we are saying it's a best tool because we should not go for the oral and paper pencil test alone rather we should be evaluating children on task based uh, uh, assignments where their class uh, assignments what they are doing uh, throughout uh, their school time uh, will be assessed so i think whatever we are thinking and uh, we, we and rather will be uh, i'm getting uh, this kind of idea i have already written to pallavi also that will be inviting uh, maybe uh, all of us uh, to those kind of forums so that we can put our uh, agenda strongly so uh, it's not going to be a problem so assessment is happening that way and one more line i feel that art integrated learning in the beginning uh, may look that it takes time but once you do one activity the way siddhi had explained or mandakini ji uh, was sharing one activity can take us to so many interdisciplinary concepts that maybe once you do and then for 10 15 days you don't have to do another activity because children will have experienced it and uh, class after class they remember what they did in class 2 what they did in class 5 so finally it is a sustainable learning system uh, which is promoted through art integrated learning so rather you lose less time you use less time and you learn more so uh, uh, later on it will be that beneficial Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And on that note, I'd just like to say that art helps us speak what words can't explain. So, on that note, I'd like to uh, thank all the lovely panelists that we had today for sparing out their time and being with us for such a wonderful session on hire. And I would also like to thank all our audiences for being with us, uh, staying so patiently until now, although it is past. six already uh, and we'll be hoping to meet you next wednesday same time 5 o'clock for another amazing session thank you everyone good day